everybody, Jamie Salinas here. Welcome to The Art of Magic. We're on the road today. We're visiting Lake Charles. That's the Golden Nugget. Golden Nugget right over there. We are here to see, well, stick around and find out who we're going to see. And we're back. It's been a little over a week since the last episode, so my apologies. Uh, performances, shows, family, life got in the way, and unfortunately I wasn't able to get out the video on a regular timely basis. But hey, we've got it out today, and I've got some exciting information for you. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, a big group of us drove out to Louisiana, our friends to the east. Uh, about an hour and 45 minute drive from my house, we went to the Golden Nugget Casino in Lake Charles, where we saw a duo act of the clairvoyance fantastic incredibly well done show if you have not seen them already you make an effort go see their show do yourself a favor fantastic uh, performance so hey since we're on the road since we're going to see a, a, a fellow um, performing artist I thought why not use this opportunity to benefit me so I, I grabbed a big stack of business cards stuck in my pocket you see, they're performing in a 2,500 seat theater. There's opportunity for other people who are there to see a magic performance, a mentalism show, to, to really possibly be my customer. And so I loaded up my pocket with some business cards. The other pockets were full of magic. So when I arrived, I got there early, early enough to, 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 to walk into the lobby where they're selling drinks. People are coming in, they're excited. There's an hour before the show, there's a big buzz about the, about the show performance coming up. Great opportunity for me to pull some magic out. Hey, how you doing? Are you here to see the clairvoyance? So am I. Hey, I'm also a magician. Started showing them some magic. I generated a pretty big crowd. Next thing you know, I'm handing out business cards left and right. I mean, it was, it was exactly like I planned. So the really good opportunity of passing out my cards to, to a big group of, of potential customers. Then, then I get to go inside the theater. I had some pretty good seats. We're 16 rows back from the front row. We're sitting there and, and um, uh, I'm sitting with a group of magicians. So we start talking and we start talking kind of loud because we want the others around our area to know that we are subject matter experts. We're also magicians. And so they would appreciate that my knowledge and expertise uh, would benefit them by sitting in my area because we could talk during the show and talk openly about the performances and the tricks they're doing. We could even use some of the technical jargon and uh, show off to our neighbors how smart and how educated we are and how, how much of an expert we are. So then they might in turn ask for one of my business cards and, and who knows, more potential customers. Also, since you're sitting there with other magicians, be sure to talk about the show as the show's going on. You might want to mention, hey, check it out. Uh, I've got this trick. They're about to do uh, whatever it happens to be. Then you can also point out when there's a mistake. Look, 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 the flap is still open, the trap. You can still see the assistant. That would be a great opportunity to show the others around how truly an expert you are and point it out to them so they too can see what's going on and maybe a possible uh, mistake in the show. And therefore elevating your persona as an expert and them thinking, well, maybe we should hire this guy as opposed to the people that are on the stage. So as soon as the show is over, what you wanna do is rush to the back to the lobby area again your business cards, magic. You've got 2,500 people. I doubt you were able to get to the, that number of people before the show. So here's your opportunity to continue on performing some magic, generating crowds. Now, Tommy and Emily had a um, had a little signing at the end of the show, uh, and they would a meet and greet where they would meet all the attendees. There's a big line of people lined up to, to meet Tommy and Emily. So this is a great opportunity for me to walk up and down that aisle, that line, and perform some magic for them. Hey, did you like this? Did you part of the show? Well, let me show you something even better. 
And as I'm performing, uh, this, this generates just a fantastic buzz of passing out the cards as I work my way all the way to the front of the line. And speaking of, once you get to the front of the line, there's Tommy, there's Emily, they're signing autographs. You say, hey, I'm Jamie, a magician also. You can just cut right into the front of the line because, hey, those people have, in line have already seen you perform magic. They already know that you're an expert. You're one of them. So you can boldly just cut right in front and you can visit as long as you want with uh, the performers, in this case, Tommy and Emily. So you can talk about the show. You can give critiques right then and there. Take your time because you are a subject matter expert. The, those customers in line, they're going to wait because they can appreciate who you are. So those are just some great tips on some etiquette on how to act when you go see another performer. Of course, all that was crazy talk. Don't do any of that. None of that. In fact, you shouldn't even let anybody know that you're a magician, uh, let alone cut in front of the line and all those other things. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy talk. And that's what we're talking about is how do you act when you go see another performer? You know, it's rude to be uh, discussing or talking during a performance, even if you're in the know, even if you want to talk to your buddy about what you just saw. Wait until later. There's plenty of time to discuss what's going on uh, in the performance. I always wait till the very end. Uh, to, we, we did, uh, in fact, go up and meet Emily and, and Tommy, and, but we waited till the very end, uh, end of the line, after they were signing all the autographs, taking pictures, to, to say hello and, and, and just uh, congratulate them on a fantastic performance. So keep a low key. Uh, so I want to know from you, put your comments below about uh, a magician that may have come to a performing uh, performance event where you were performing, what they did, uh, maybe how they acted, something that got on your nerves. I want to hear about it. So again, don't do any of the things that I said. Uh, that was just all joking. But how ludicrous it is, I've actually seen some other performers do this. So uh, think about it, how you're going to act, what you're going to do when you go see another performer. In the last episode, I talked about using music in your show. More specifically, I talked about the type of speakers that I use in my performances and uh, offer some suggestions for you. Uh, of course, you really the, the main thing is adding music to your performances to enhance those shows. And I had a couple of questions uh, or comments from people from the last episode that I want to read to you. The first one comes from Lee Wise. He says, are there any issues with licensing when using music with your performances, or do you just adopt the mentality of it's easier to ask for forgiveness uh, than permission? Now, Lee, that's a good question about the legality of using music in your shows. Now, I am aware that you should have BMI and ASCAP licensing to use licensed music in your show. It's easier if you just use music that you pay for, that, uh, that you own the copyright or the uh, legal right to use it in your performances. So that's going to be your better option. Now, another question or comment comes in from Eric Stevens, which thanks again for commenting of being consistent. He says, I'm very picky about my music and I try to use royalty free songs. And that's what I was really thinking about royalty free songs. So it's good. Uh, they don't have a copyright issues associated with them. But there are some tunes that I've received permission to use without paying a fee because I was bold enough to ask. Uh, fortune off favors the brave. And that's that's a great idea, Eric. Uh, many years ago, while performing at Magic Island, I did a, a floating table routine that was, uh, was a seance dark type theme uh, performance. And the music I found for me that was perfect was not copyright free music or royalty free. And I contacted the artist who owned the copyright, who the performers, and I sent them an email and said, hey, I'm a magician. I explained my situation. I explained what I wanted to do. And then I asked, hey, can I use your music in my performances for this effect? Can I add my own edits? They said, hey, not only can you add your edits, but send them to us. We want to hear them. And so I edited their music, added my enhancements, sent it back to them, and they loved it. They thought it was great. And uh, anyway, so I got permission to use the music. So Eric, that's a, that's a very bold act of asking uh, for per permission. And you never know. The worst case, they can say, no, you don't have permission and you're not going to use it. But the best case scenario, scenario is 
The answer is yes. So great suggestion, Eric. Again, uh, if you have not subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button. Click the bell uh, notification if you'd like to know when these videos come out. And please do leave a comment. This week I'm looking for comments about, of course, about a magician who's visited your performance, some bad etiquette, what you don't like, or maybe what you've experienced. So I hope to be reading some of those comments on the next episode. And speaking of the next episode, I'll see you on the next episode.